So there are several things that we have learned to do in JavaScript. Uh, <clears throat> we've learned how to access JavaScript functions such as alert and prompt, but we've also learned how to create our own functions. So for this particular web page, we created a function called my first that gathered values from text boxes and wrote information out to a paragraph. And the way that this works is we just put values in the text box And when we click here, it calls that function my first, gathers the information from the text box, and writes to a paragraph. So uh, here, the way that we did that, the way that we called the function was to add this onClick attribute. But there is an improved way to do this, and that is with an event handler. So what we're going to do today is learn how to use add event handler. And the way that this works, we're going to be speaking JavaScript, so I'm going to do this in script tags. I need to get the element that I want to add a listener to. So it's this button that I want to add a listener to. So I'm going to get that element. Uh, I'm going to just use it the same way I usually do by getting that element by ID. So notice this one doesn't have an ID yet, so I'm going to add that. And this is my message button. And so that's, I'm going to add that ID so I can get that button. Now when I get that button, I'm going to add event listener. All right, now this is a new method that we're just learning, a new function that we're just learning now. So we want to add that event listener and I'm going to, in quotes, it requires, this is a function call and it requires two parameters. The first one is the event type, and we want to do this on the click event, and so I'm going to do click. Notice the difference when you're using the attribute, all of the events are preceded with on, uh, but when you're using an event listener, it's just click. It's just the event itself, not with the on part. The second argument is the name of the function that is to be called when this event happens. Uh, again, notice the difference. Here we use the, we have to use the parentheses, but in the add event listener, you do not. You just put the name of the function. So again, a string that contains the event and then just the name of the function. And that's the entire call. What this will do is it will replace this attribute with the function call. And it will actually add this a listener to this button. So that what happens is when this, this event happens on that button, it will call this function. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Go ahead and reload the page, enter the information, and click on it, and there we go. It did the same thing again. <clears throat> so now we have, notice it's, it does exactly the same. So it's just a different way and it moves the JavaScript outside of the HTML. So now we no longer have this function call embedded in the HTML. It makes it very separate. So let's go ahead and organize our code and move this up into our other script tags. So let's just gather all of our JavaScript together and I'll move this up here inside this script tag up here. And there there, we've just <clears throat> simply moved it up so we have a single script tag. I'm going to save this and refresh. And notice that I come up here with an error. And it's saying on line 16 that it cannot read the property, so it can't do add event listener of null, which means <clears throat> this part is null. It wasn't able to find that button. And the reason it couldn't is because it loads from the top down and it it, it does what um, it executes every line as it gets to it. So this line is saying to add an event listener to this element with ID set to message. But notice it doesn't yet see any element with ID set to message. In fact, it won't see that until way down here. So it has to load all the, the whole page all the way down to here before it sees it. So this is a problem. Notice it doesn't have a problem with the function my first here it's ask, accessing these but this doesn't execute because it's inside a function so we want to do the same thing here we want to put this command inside a function and in fact i'm going to make it a function that 
sets all the listeners. Okay, so I'm just going to just call this add listener. So add listeners, this is going to be a function that I'm writing as the programmer. <clears throat> and I'm going to just add this line inside there. All right, so now when I load this, I no longer get that error because this doesn't execute until the function is called. Well, that works great for loading, but, but now we'll see that, that we don't, oops. But now when we reload this and we put in Sally, and that's my goldfish that is only three months old, when I click on there, nothing happens. Because this, since this line is inside a function, it doesn't happen until this function is called. So what I want to do now is I want to call this function, um, and this is how we want to do it. We want to be able to add these listeners when the page loads, but specifically after the page loads, so that it has access to every single element that we might be adding listeners to. So the event that we can do that with, well, we have it now. The element we can do that to is the window element. And we can call the an add event listener on for the whole window. So as this window, um, we can add a listener to the window. So, and that's just the browser window. The event that I want to use is load. And this event is triggered after the page loads. So after the whole entire page load happens, then this event is triggered, and that's exactly when we want it to happen. So when that happens, then we want to call this function add listeners. All right, and that gives us a chance to <clears throat> make sure the whole thing is loaded before it's called. So let's see if that will work for us. We refresh it. We say Sally, and that's goldfish. And it's three months old. And sure enough, and now it works for us. So now we've been able to add an event listener to actually to the window loading that calls this function. And we can use that then to wire up all the event listeners we want to add. And you can have as many different event listeners as you want inside here. And you can you can add as many as many different things as you want right in here directly. So oops. Okay, and that gives us how to use the function add event listener on any element in in, in on any HTML element.